Okay, so a uh, key reason that we have chosen the topic that we're looking at today in this workshop is because of two key learnings that were coming out um, from lockdown, both being reported by the National Church and from trends that were being observed by all sorts of parachurch organisations. And then also things that we were hearing locally as well from the workshops that we've been running and just um, anecdotally from uh, churches around Ipswich. Um, so two key learnings that um, we noticed that we can connect people into Sundays um, who perhaps would not or could not have accessed them before, but also that we noticed that we could start speaking to people every day, no matter where they were or how much time they had, um, which has perhaps been something that we've been looking for new ways to do for a while, but that was something that churches were noticing they were able to do is um, bring people into the kind of daily life of the church as well as just those Sunday gatherings. Um, and it's particularly that learning that um, kind of brings us on to what we're looking at today is how can we continue to have that everyday growth. Um, so we're going to be specifically looking at social media and midweek social media and how we might implement that in our communities and our churches in order to um, grow each day to strengthen our congregations um, and to strengthen all the other parts of what we do. So um, we'll share three easy steps for speaking to people throughout the week online. And then we'll give you some rhythms and template, templates that you can follow and adapt in your own context. And then finally, we'll tackle some of the obstacles to a good social media presence as well. Um, so hopefully what this will do is to give you a bit of an idea of the kind of content that you can be using throughout the week online, which will support the other activity that you do. Um, sometimes it can be hard to think up precisely what we should be posting. Um, so we'll try to give you some actions that you can call people to and some um, questions that you can ask yourself or the person who runs your social media can ask themselves um, as they uh, post and share content online. While we're going through the presentation, do feel free to take notes. If you're a note taker, this will all be recorded and will go up on our YouTube channel. Um, and also, if you want to post any questions in the chat or make a note of a question to ask later, there'll be an opportunity for questions at the end. Um, so do feel free to either put them in the chat or make a note. Okay, so um, for this per first part, we're just going to talk about using social media to strengthen a congregation. Um, this is something I'm fully convinced of that actually social media lends itself um, to allow us to do that, to uh, encourage and equip and speak daily to the people that we have in our communities. Um, I've put the word congregation here. I'm going to be applying this specifically in a parish context, but if you are here um, because of your involvement in a fresh expression or anything like that, then just substitute in any community activity. It works for anything. Um, and when I talk about Sundays, just substitute in whatever that gathering is that your community revolves around. So these principles work for any community that kind of revolves around some form of gathering. Yeah, okay, so there is gonna be a bit of um, shifting thinking possibly for some of us in terms of social media, because um, the way that sometimes we can default to using social media, particularly when we are an in-person community, when we revolve around an in-person gathering or we revolve around a specific day of the week, as we do, um, social media can often become a space where we just put up the information to point people to that key thing. So on Sunday, we're meeting at 10 o'clock and that's our Facebook post for the week. Um, but actually social media was designed to be a place of interaction. So an example of this, rather than saying on Sunday, we're meeting at 10 o'clock is Sundays are better with you in them. We'd love to share this Sunday service with you at 10 a.m. online. Who do you love to share your Sundays with? Now, that might not be the language that, you know, those are my words, not the words that you might put. But um, this is about shifting our thinking from social media being a space for information um, and making it a place for interaction, which is what it was designed to be um, and is how people will tend to use it most often. 
So the three easy steps um, for creating an effective social media presence throughout the week. I've broken this up into looking back at Sunday, looking ahead to Sunday and creating a midweek rhythm. So those are just helpful categories as we go through these um, principles behind what you can post on social media throughout the week. And again, if it's not Sunday for you, if you're thinking of a different community, just substitute that in. So part one, looking back at Sunday. So I've split this into two actions that you might want to think about um, as you reflect on Sunday on your social media. So it's reminisce and remind, and hopefully they both start with the same letter. <laughs> So um, these are two actions that you might want to take as you um, post on social media following your Sunday. So something's <coughs> happened and then how am I going to check in with my congregation um, as we come off the back of Sunday? So the first is reminisce. So the question to ask yourself with this is, how can I celebrate Sunday and make it sound unmissable? Now, it might seem a bit funny to try and make Sunday sound unmissable after the fact, but in this season, especially when some churches are still running online or people have been away from the habit of going to church for some time, um, I think we will encounter some problems in terms of people, dip, in terms of people dipping in and out of, of Sundays. So we not only want to celebrate what happened and celebrate who was there, but remind the people who missed it that they did miss something and that there's something that they'll want to come back to next week. So this is reminiscing. Um, celebrate how good it was to be together. Um, social media works um, in a very commemorative way. People love to say, you know, I was there. And people hate to see that they missed out on something. And that's the reality of how a lot of social media works, particularly platforms like Instagram. It's all about reminiscing and remembering and celebrating what you did and showing others that they missed out. Um, so that's one principle that you can use as you follow up from Sunday. So don't just leave Sunday as it is, reminisce with the people who came and gathered with you, whether online or in the room and celebrate that event. So it's reminisce and then it's also remind. Um, so the question to ask yourself with this is, how can I solidify Sunday's message? So you've perhaps prepared a sermon for Sunday or you had a certain theme, a certain reading, a certain reflection. Um, what can often happen is people go off for the rest of your week as all of you will be all too aware because we've all done it and completely forget about what we were challenged on on Sunday or forget about that theme. So um, it's a great uh, principle to start adopting to remind people of what you talked about um, at the middle of the week. So how can I solidify what we talked about on Sunday? So maybe you can post a highlight from the talk, possibly even a filmed highlight if your talk was online and you pre-recorded it or you streamed it. You could post a small section of the talk or remind them of the challenge you gave them, ask them a question about how they've been doing with that challenge um, remind them of the theme and how they've been living out that theme this week. Um, so reminding your congregation or your community of what you talked about so it doesn't just slip off the radar. And so you have that shared memory of what it was like to be together again. So that's looking back at Sunday. So maybe that covers your first half of the week. Um, and then you want to start looking ahead to what's happening the following Sunday. Now, we all want people to turn up, whether it's online or in the room. Um, and what we'll often revert to is giving people the information and say, be there. Um, but how can we start to look ahead to Sunday in a way that strengthens our community as we do? And for this one, there are three I's. So it's interest, include and invite. So firstly, we've got interest. The question with this is, how can I pique somebody's interest for what's happening on Sunday? You know, what will make them think, I need to tune into that? What will make them curious about what you're talking about? A um, Couple of principles with this, it, tease, don't tell. 
you know if you give away all the good stuff then they might think that you know they've already got what they came for um, so just a teaser perhaps a question that you're thinking about and then if you're the person who's going to be speaking if you're somebody who's doing a reading on Sunday or something like that share why you're looking forward to Sunday share what you're anticipating and what you're hoping for and that will start to excite other people as well um, about what's coming up so that's interest and then include so again social media is not a one-way street it's not about me just putting out information and other people observing it people want to feel that there's an element of interaction um, and it's great to include people and start to get people thinking about what Sunday will be and why it will matter for them. Um, so how can I help others feel that they are part of this is a good question to be asking. So um, maybe ask a question that gets people thinking about Sunday's theme or start a conversation about where they'll be tuning in from if they're watching online or who they'll be watching with. Um, it just starts to make people feel like they're um, included and they're going to be part of something when they join on Sunday. Um, and it's about that midweek connection point where people are still um, interacting with one another and sharing kind of community life online with each other. And then invite. So how can I help my congregation invite their friends? I've captured their interest. I've included them in the conversation that's happening around Sunday. And then how can I help them invite others to be a part of it? So a really simple thing that you can do and that some churches are adopting is to just create a little graphic um, that invites others to watch or come along, that you share and you encourage your people to share that with their friends. So you make it really easy for them to invite others to come along. You can even use the same exact graphic every single week um, just to also make that part of your community culture as well that you want to bring others along into it as well. So those are kind of some principles and then we're going to solidify them by talking about what that would look like in practice. Um, and a great way of kind of building these <laughs> into your church's social media is to create a midweek rhythm. So you're inviting your community into a rhythm with you. And what that does is it, um, gives you a really easy way of remembering those different things so you can set times when um, you will be reminiscing and reminding and interesting and involving and so on and so forth but also one thing that people have been talking about i think more often recently is those kind of rules of life and those habits and practices and community rhythms um, that social media kind of gives us the opportunity to invite people into a bit. Um, seems a bit counterintuitive because we can think social media is actually kind of the big force against all of those spiritual disciplines, but um, that actually it can be, uh, we can invite people into rhythms by sharing things online on certain days and reminding people that throughout the week we are a community that practices um, life with God together. Um, so this is about asking, well, how can I use the daily opportunity to speak to my community in order to help them with whole life discipleship? Um, so I'll give you a template for doing this. And this is just a template to just help you to think through how this might apply in your context. But it uses some of those things we've just talked about as well. So let's say you set this up as a midweek rhythm. So on Monday, you reminisce, you celebrate what happened on Sunday when you were either gathered online or in the room. Um, on Tuesday, maybe you pray, maybe you share a prayer. On Wednesday, you remind people of what you talked about on Sunday. You ask people how they're applying that in their own life or something like that. On Thursday, you start to look ahead to the next time that you'll get together, either physically or online. You ignite people's interests and you start to include them in that conversation. 
Um, perhaps on Friday you talk about opportunities to serve or to connect further into the church, or maybe you treat that as a day off for your church's social media. That's always a good principle to apply as well. Um, and then on Saturday, Saturday is invitation day. Perhaps you, um, one, invite others to come along on Sunday, but to help uh, your congregation to share that invitation further afield as well. And then you repeat it. So it just becomes a rhythm that your church adopts. And as you do that online, other people are able to participate in that rhythm. Uh, it gives them a way of being part of the life of the church throughout the week. And there's an element of predictability, predictability to it, which is actually quite comforting for people. <coughs> So you could substitute anything in there and it's by no means exhaustive and you also don't have to do only one thing each day. Um, but hopefully that opens um, up some possibilities for you in terms of how you can kind of connect people into that rhythm by using your social media throughout the week. So I'm just gonna run through very briefly some examples of this so that um, you start to kind of see what it looks like in practice. So let's say on Monday, you reminisce about what happened. So I've just pulled out an example from HTB here. Um, they've posted this on a Sunday following their service. But um, today at HTB, we were joined by the speaker, Nai Bradish, and um, then just posted about what she talked about and a picture with it. So it's just reminiscing about what's happened. Um, phrases like, it was great to be together. It was great to see you. Those sorts of things all work really well. So maybe that's what you do on a Monday. And then Tuesday, maybe you take time to pray. Um, take a moment out of your day to pray this and you share a prayer that your whole community can use. Perhaps you even invite people to do it all at the same time or something like that. Then maybe Wednesday, you remind. So you post perhaps a quote from the talk, a quote from the passage you looked at on Sunday um, and ask, how have you been putting this into practice this week? Start a conversation um, around that topic so it doesn't just get lost in people's busy lives. Uh, Thursday, you might start to interest people and involve them. Um, so this is an example from St. Augustine's. They've posted, we love Sundays and join in the fun tomorrow. And they've got a picture um, with their graphic for their Sunday series with some cats looking at it. So <laughs> maybe that provokes people's curiosity a bit. But maybe you could post something like, you know, this coming Sunday, we're looking at a powerful set of lyrics from the Book of Psalms. What are your favorite song lyrics? So you start to involve people in that conversation Perhaps as you're preparing your sermon, there are certain questions that you're asking. Maybe you're starting your sermon with a question. Why not ask people that on the Thursday and start to pique their interest and involve them? And then Saturday, you could invite. So uh, Waterfront Churches, they often will post um, a graphic on a Friday or a Saturday. Um, They've made one here. Join us for our service of Holy Communion tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Everyone welcome. Just something that their church community can share. Um, but just something as simple as a, uh, something you post that says, do you want to come to church with me or do you want to watch church online with me? And um, just gives your people a really easy way of sharing that invitation with a friend. So... <laughs> that's an example of a midweek rhythm but possibly what you're thinking is well online and in the room and midweek it's a lot so um what i would love to do now is just throw this out to you and just ask what our what are your initial thoughts on the capacity you have to do this because i think so often this can be the big thing that kind of we butt up against um, when it comes to these. So um, I'd love for one of you to just kick us off. Um, perhaps you could start by mentioning what it is that you currently do midweek um, or what you would like to do and then your initial thoughts on your capacity for this and any other questions that you've just noted down. I'll hand it over. Go on, Bob. Well, I recently found out that there's a schedule button and you can schedule all of this, which 
probably a lot of people knew for a long time, but I found out that that really helped me. Mm. So I would have a, a pattern, um, the food for thought that I do, and each day I do a different thing, and I schedule it all in one go. I could do a couple of weeks in one go, and then it feels so nice to sort of sit back and to see your your posts come up each day and to know that you don't have to do it every day. So I think for me, that was once I'm in the zone, I could schedule quite a lot at once. That's great. So that's, that's on Facebook. So when you go on to Facebook and you post a, um, you call it a post, don't you? There's a little button at the bottom of the post and it says, would you like to schedule? And you click on the calendar um, and you choose the time and the date and it just comes up automatically which is, yeah, when you first find it, you'll want to schedule lots of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Great, that's a really good tip. Thanks. What sorts of things do you post, do you schedule to post, Bob? Well, on a Sunday, I put a, um, a question on, and it's just, because we don't meet at the moment, so it's more, that's our sort of time to think. And then on a Monday, there's a video. The question links to the video. So I'm hoping, like what you said about peaking interest, that. People are looking forward to seeing the video. Yeah. Um, and then on a Wednesday, there's a Bible verse. And then on a Friday, there's a prayer. But it all sort of links together. And then I leave the other days to put sort of more um, spontaneous stuff on if stuff comes up. So. Great. Thank you for sharing. Jerry. Hi, um, just talking about capacity, if I can go back, because we're on a pretty steep learning curve um, in uh, Whitnesham, um, Westerfield and Tuttenham, in the sense that the congregation's pretty elderly uh, for a start off, quite a lot of resistance to uh, social media full stop, really. And so we've actually gone online with the service this um, in the interregnum, sorry, in the um, lockdown. And that was quite a struggle for getting going, but it's actually proved quite successful. But there was a, quite a lot that just didn't want to get involved in being involved with social media per se. So A, the capacity of reaching out, let alone the capacity of doing things. And we have been in interregnum, uh, so that capacity of actually doing things has been pretty stretched. And I'm, I'm actually l love listening to what you're doing and the actual ideas of rhythm and so on and so forth. But A, we've got the issues of getting the capacity to receive things, i.e. build up numbers in Facebook. We actually have got a, a refresh benefits Facebook as part of Inspiring it, which we actually have set up. Um, not, not particularly successful at the moment, but um, community Facebooks driven by church people in our three villages. I mean, there are only about 100 um, named persons on that or joined in it, but it's a, it's a good start, I think. Um, so it's capacity in terms of just receiving, let alone in terms of delivering. With Charlotte coming, we'll see how we go in terms of organising the delivery on trying to get some things done. So for me, it's actually a very high learning term to curve in terms of capacity and uh, I'm very pleased to see what's going on elsewhere. Great. Mm. Annette. I was just relieved when you started to go through it that you're not expecting huge amounts of stuff. Just small questions is enough, just an engagement. And I think that's really good because you're almost, you do a small part, but you're expecting the community to come back with something. And I think that invitation is really quite exciting for some people to read, especially if they're at home and they're isolating and it's like they don't exist anymore. To be able to put out something that everybody engages with yeah. would be quite exciting for them. So. I think that's really good. But yeah. I do take Jerry's point that some people feel overloaded already. Yeah. But I think actually if you sell it as a small, it's only a small little nugget you're asking for. You're not asking for a, a whole sermon or a whole reflection just to pull out one point. And it, could, it ne didn't necessarily need to be the person who's leading the service. It could be anybody really who sat in that service and thought, that's, that's engaged me that point. I'm going to put that point up there. Yeah. So, yeah. And the, the great thing about this is that a lot of it is to do with just repackaging. So it's not a new idea. It's the same idea you had on Sunday and you just, you know, remind people in a really short nugget, as you say, on a Wednesday or something, or, you know, somebody's thinking ahead to what's happening next week and you post a little preview or a little question that's related. Yeah. So a lot of it is kind of, you know, just reusing all the stuff that you already have. 
um, rather than having to think up something. Once that to... question's out there that other people can engage with, even if they're not on social media, it will be gossiped around the village. Have you heard the question that's being asked this time? Yeah. So, Jerry, it might just be that once you've got that question out there, people will share it with each other and start talking about it mm -hmm. as, a, as a point. So. I think I think there is a question of actually who's doing it. I mean, I think the inference is, you know, you mentioned, you know, from the talk on Sunday and so on, and maybe the priest in charge or the vicar or whatever it is. I, I think sometimes, certainly in the lockdown, we've got a little bit tired of seeing the same and our online services, the same, no, 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 um, yeah. uh, same, the same, same, seeing the same face doing everything. And that's a, a problem with capacity that we have in who's able to deliver online not just in terms of not criticizing the persons or anything like that yeah. you just get a bit fed up of seeing the same old yeah. person on delivering <laughs> sure it does invite new people in though doesn't it because it means yeah, if yeah, somebody's got something they want to add they can just write a little comment or something about how it's working for them yeah. it might not work but it's good it's worth a try <laughs> lots of people are growing in confidence to do things as well um yeah so most churches now you've got all sorts of people happy to have a go just need to encourage yeah. encourage people I think that's very important. Confidence is, is a key word for us anyway. I mean, actually just getting involved and even if you're just commenting on the, on the, on the talk, like we had, you know, I went to two, an online one and uh, uh, Charlotte's first service on Sunday. So I had three, well, and another one I went to, but three talks on love, 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 you know, and I wanted to <laughs> share that, but actually I only shared it with the individuals, not with the whole community. Okay. So yep. The confidence of yeah. sharing it wider than yeah. just responding yeah. to them. Yeah, so you can set the ball rolling, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Leave it, well, you see. Revival at <laughs> WTW. expecting a comment to appear. <laughs> Malcolm, did you put your hand yeah, up? Just to comment to start off with, um, it's interesting the point was made that with social media, it's not like a newspaper or magazine that you read for years where you just get information and there's very little opportunity for you to comment unless you write into the editor, uh, etc. <laughs> um, it's social media because it's not like that it is a two-way um system yeah um you can put stuff on other people can do it etc the question of capacity capacity i think it's quite a good one because i feel that obviously the church has changed as we all know in the last since march yeah and i think we need to put capacity in the, in the church to do it because mm -hmm. this is the new way forward it's yeah. looking to the future yeah and if we don't um, devote resources and capacity to it, I think we may be on a loser here. So I think we churches need to make capacity to do it, yeah? Because that does reach a people which we would not have reached as church was before March. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sonia. Um, yes, I think that the question of capacity is, is quite key because we had absolutely nobody who knew enough about websites and enough about social media. And it was really interesting because we set up a, so, a social media committee um, and we just looked at each other and we thought, none of us knows what they're doing. And by sheer luck, one of us was talking to somebody who was a bell ringer, nothing to do with the church. And lo and behold, he was a website designer and he offered to do, to redesign our website and actually work with us for nothing. Wow. And he's, that is his profession. Yeah. And I think what that made me think is actually by talking to people, don't be frightened, talk to people, ask for help. And it's amazing. And now we've got two people, one who's very technical and is providing us with this service and one person who's very good at the communication. And so, although we are nowhere near uh, what other churches are doing, but actually it feels like we're making a huge move in the right direction. That's fantastic. Thank you. Rhiannon. Um, I've learned that one of the key people that's helping um, Ruth and everyone at St. Matthew's is, a, is he 14 years old, Ruth? And I just, I see what he does and it's amazing. And I'm just thinking of all your choir people, Sonia, all those little ones, they're probably all brilliant. Do they? <laughs> we need to get all the heroes at Matt's to train up all the other ones. <laughs> because they're, and, and, they're really great. 
It, it is, and I think um, that is one instance where I can put my hand to my heart and say, prayer actually worked. Yeah. Brilliant. Great. Tracy. Sorry, I just realised I was on mute. <laughs> um, I love the idea of maybe um, re-showing like a little graphic or a little piece of a snippet of something that maybe took, you know, happened in your event or your Sunday service. How easy is that to do? Because I'm not, I've never done that. How easy is it to snip something out of, oh, ours are recorded onto, well, they're on YouTube, so I'm... Yeah. So if, if it's a snippet of a video, you know, you can get free editing software. Um, so for, you know, you can get a, literally an app that's called video editor on a PC or iMovie on a Mac, or um, I can definitely send you a list of even free apps that you can do this with. I've done it on a mobile before as well. Um, to just snip up it's those apps once you get onto them it sounds daunting before you do it but once you get onto them they're actually quite intuitive to just to figure your way through and certainly um, young people in your church will be able to do it so that's a great way to um, involve them as well um, so that's really easy to do and then in terms of graphics um, in a moment I'll share with you the tool that um, a free tool that creates loads of templates and um, really nice looking graphic design templates that will just allow anybody to pop in the text that they want to use and then share it. Um, so easier than you think is the answer to your question. Um, and I can certainly get specific video editing um, tools. I can circulate a list of those for sure. Um, and yeah, I'll come on to a graphic design tool in a moment that you can use. Thank you. Great. You're welcome. Any other thoughts? Okay, perhaps I'll, I'll go straight on to those tools then. Um, so the free graphic design software that I would most recommend you have to create a login for it but it's completely free and they don't spam you with emails so it's a win-win um, that is a free gra graphic design software and it's called Canva and that's what it looks like it's both an app and a website so you can do it either on your laptop or you can do it really easily from your phone um, and that has loads of um, graphics which are designed for all sorts of different mediums so there'll be ones that are specifically scaled for Instagram specifically for Facebook YouTube etc etc um, and then you can just add your text in there um, and it's really high quality really nicely designed stuff so I would definitely recommend that if you're looking for a tool to help you um, with graphic design um, one-to-one -one social media rhythm development with me. <laughs> if you would like to um, help a group of you or an individual who's responsible for your social media to start to implement something like a rhythm for your midweek social media, then I would love to um, go over that with you on Zoom. Um, certainly, uh, yeah, anybody who you want to get involved in that, um, I would be very happy to do that. And you can contact me. My email address is at the bottom of the screen, rebecca.roberts at cofesuffolk.org. Um, and uh, we can sit down and go through that and try to create a form of template that you could use in your community if that will help you with capacity in particular. And the last one is not so much a tool, but a habit, which is very transformative when it comes to um, having content that you can actually put on your social media. Um, I call it making commemoration a habit. And what I mean by that is that, um, you know, commemorating what happened on a Sunday um, and making that part of the culture of your church. So that looks like things like encouraging people taking photos. Um, so whether that's people taking selfies of themselves, watching 
uh, church online at home or selfies in the room or you taking photos that you have permission for um, at your gatherings or encouraging people to um, share their favorite moments from Sunday or I love what um, Jerry's just mentioned about wanting to share things about love 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 on social media so encouraging people to follow up on their own social media and on your social media and commemorate um, what it was like to be together, what happened and um, why they want others to be a part of it. So um, starting to build that into the culture of your church. So maybe that looks like ending your um, Sunday gatherings by um, reminding people to either send in their photos or share something later on in the afternoon or just things like that that start to build that in and what it does for you is it gives you a whole load of content that you can then use um, and photos that you can use as well as long as you have permission for them um, to go on your social media. So those are three key things that um, I hope can help um, a little bit on the way to um, creating some capacity for that. Thank you so much for being part of this. Thank you. Thank you're there. Lovely to see you. Parish Council meeting. That's December. fine. <laughs> That's fine. Thanks okay. ever so much for being part of it. Very, very useful. Thank you very much.